Good evening. It's a sad time when such an iconic building as the Chartres Cathedral, or Chartres Cathedral, not ever sure how to pronounce that as an Englishman, is seen in flames, the roof burning, the spire falling. A spire that inspired right from the 12th century, 100 years, 150 years to build. It's taken many, many decades actually to try and restore by many hardworking people. And yet two days ago on the 15th of April, we saw it burn. Some in the media called this the heart of France. Uh, others focused on the cultural loss. But what it seems to herald is that nothing, nothing in form is permanent. It has a kind of harbinger of this Saturn Pluto, that even the old structures of the world, the Saturn in Capricorn, those archaic institutions of authority and power that we revere, perhaps even the seven wonders of the world, perhaps uh, Perhaps Chartres was one of those. It will resurrect through the flames, but it will never be the same. It's been demolished by fire, and fire transforms ultimately the form. It changes it irrevocably. Something is not as it was. And yet the spirit of it will live on because the essence of what Chartres is and what it means to many people in the hearts of men, women and children across the globe is that remains. Perhaps the message is very Uranus in Taurus at the moment that nothing in form is certain. Maybe Pluto is this oncoming conjunction of Saturn, conjunction Pluto, that the old forms die and that we must begin afresh or anew. I'm not going to go too much into the chakra as a symbol. Um, I think that would defame it a little in a sense to try and um, symbolize the event. There's a lot of tension in the world at the moment. People have their axes to grind. And I do feel, however, that the um, the fire, the furnace that Chartres was turned into, was no accident. I think it was probably planned as this great Pluto in Capricorn and Saturn in Capricorn suggests a kind of demolition of the old. Whether this is a strikeout against the Church of Rome um, there have been many difficulties in France, actually. There's been strikes on various churches uh, for, right from the beginning of the new year, and whether it's another in the prizes of those that seek to destroy things in the hearts of people. Um, but Chartres is not a building as such. It is a monument, a testament to the dignity of man and the... Um, the need to raise the um, human individual ego to a, a, a sense of something beyond it. The spire represents a, a, a shooting into the heavens, into the stars. That the prayers, as if the prayers go up into that spire and into heaven. You don't have to be religious to appreciate what's going on. So today, what I would like to do is have an inquiry into the, in using horary technique, to look into the chart, um, the speculative chart, of course, to see whether it reveals anything. Now, so I looked on the internet, and as far as I could gather, the fire started at 6.40 on the 15th of April 2019 in France.
It may have started before, but that's about it, because I know that closing time was at 6.45. And it seems very, very strange to me, or no, no mere coincidence, that it occurs in Holy Week for the Christian calendar, where um, the uh, representation of a person in line with um, a, a, a divine calling in the person of Christ um, went forth into his life and gladly engaged his own death as a metamorphosis, as a kind of um, uh, an offering of um, himself with a capital H to some other order of reality knowing full well it would involve suffering and so on but the the message is there as a kind of um in us it's a pattern it's it, it's lasted forever and it's no coincidence that this occurs during what is usually called the triodium triodium uh, sorry if i pronounce that incorrectly but the three days of the morning of the loss of a person and the resurrection of a, uh, a, a divine entity which has held colossus sway over Western generations for um, millennia. And as I say in this video, this isn't a video about religion, about any particular religion, um, but there's been some transformation going on. Yes, there, it is symbolic in a way that the entire roof, the entire uh, um, structure are, um, uh, has been um, decimated in the furnace of fire. So I'm going, to look at the, I'm going to look at the chart and I'd like to share it with you now um, as, uh, as an orrery. And I hope that you can all see this uh, chart now. Now, in horary astrology, and what I am deeming to be a question, is an inquiry into the matter of what of of the fire, of who committed it, what was it about, and I would like to just engage this chart as an act of um, uh, soaking my imagination into the symbols and seeing what comes, a kind of uh, an attempt of a divinatory kind to uh, speculate uh, and to inquire into um, astrology, inquire into see if the validity of these symbols can tell us anything about this event. Yes, there are various rules. Um, it is over the third degree on the ascendant and so the chant is valid. The moon is not void of course. There is no um, Saturn in the seventh house or the first, it doesn't destroy the question, and um, etc. What I'd like to start off is with the ascendant. I was thinking about the symbolism of Libra, and in, in its greatest symbolism, it simply marks the end of the day, it simply marks sunset. It is as if the sun is moving down and the light of the end of the day where a, a consciousness is given over to the moon, the light in the darkness of night. And uh, it, it's no, uh, and so I, I think this marks and, and perhaps doesn't symbolize but shows that there's something, there is something in the mind or in the event which marks the end of the day, or wanted to, wanted to symbolize that. The um, dawn, if you like, no, not the dawn, the, the sunset. And Libra often represents that. You can see in its symbolism here um, that that's the, that's the line and that's the sun going down. Quite a beautiful part of the day, but represents the fall of the sun. The individual light of consciousness, which is... Um, sunken into the, the the realm of the other, that it it comes forth at dawn with a new birth, with a, a new sun, and dawn of a new day, but eventually ends in its own death. The 
all of the collective signs from Libra through to Pisces represents a kind of death of the individual self because they all represent relating to the other, to the collective. And so in a way, this is the death of the individual itself, himself or herself. So Libra is a kind of strange sign which represents the, uh, the uh, bringing into marriage of self and other, the realization that the individual itself is, is, has to relate whether that's to the public or another. And so therefore it is the sign of the other. So there's something to consider here, the death of the individual. The moon, general signification. I think this moon here has a, a is, is quite telling um, because it represents the, uh, uh, it is the ruler of the 10th house, which often marks the signature, the name, the outer office that we see. And we see on that there's a great sign of cancer here um, uh, and its moon. And of course, we are talking about Notre Dame, which means Our Lady. But I'll come back to that in a minute. The main signification, one of the main significations here, is we see Mars in the ninth house. Now, the houses in horary astrology represent those actualizations, the materializations, the experiences, the circumstance, the people uh, that represent the principle of the natural sign on the house, which would be, of course, Sagittarius, representing in general those things which, which take us beyond ourselves namely those things which take us beyond ourselves temples churches represents the people of the church represents those interested in holy journeys and pilgrimages and voyages abroad for a greater purpose jupiter is in general that planet which um, is, is, is the impetus behind the search for something beyond the known, therefore represents religion, the experience of discovery, the experience of moving forth beyond us, and indeed into knowledge and science, because science is the discovery of things. As certainly on a broader plane, if it's materialistic science, then it simply represents an understanding of the material world, but there's more there's more, there's more beyond. And so the ninth house represents our great cathedrals, our churches, our priests of whatever culture and whatever creed. And we see in here the grand signification of that planet which represents fire and furnaces and burnings of Mars, the god of war, the god of conflict. And it seems to me that this fanning of the flames, this interception, this is a fire uh, generally created, I think, by the hands of someone, because Gemini represents the hands in materiality. It represents the manipulation and certain some kind of uh, uh, um, this this ten ten is, is almost symbolic of the sign of Gemini, the sign of twins, that one side and another. And so I see here that when as this ascendant moved forward and it moves roughly four minutes per degree, in 20 minute mark it would have been trying this and I believe that once it went up and the wind or the air on top of the building fanned the flames in that spire, it would have it would have gone up literally and so i see this mars in gemini here as the fanning of the flames at the top of the chart it is the most elevated planet it represents the eighth the kind of hidden force behind the veil it represents the seventh of open enemies which we have yet to see because at the moment it is an intercepted sign something intercepted we see this terrible uh, 29th degree here 29 degrees of any sign is often representative of a darkness in uh, that something is about to change so this general symbolism here of mars in the ninth house the burning down of a cathedral or a, or a church or a temple uh, is, is represented here 
but it is in a human sign and I believe it represents some person or conflict unknown as yet uh, that uh, by, the, uh, by their hand um, made this happen. The moon is general indicator, it's co-significator of anything, but often the movement in the matter. We can see this moon also moving to a square of Mars. It's six degrees off, the same as the ascendant is six degrees off, and this seems to represent the, um, the, uh, 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 the, the movement of the place. And I believe the moon here is a significator of the church itself, the mother church, it is a Catholic church, and it is called Our Lady. But it may also represent here somehow something to do with co-workers and maintenance. The sign of maintenance is here as the moon is in it. Somebody that was perceived as a friend, somebody that somehow uh, uh, maintained certain elements, but as I say, this, this has to do with it. But let's look closer still. Let's look into the hidden enemy behind, and we see Mercury. Mercury, the duplicitous Mercury. When I looked at the uh, solar fire, what I found with Mercury is that it has a minus 14 point element. In other words, when we weigh up all the different positions of Mercury, of course, it's in the sign opposite that it rules, and it's in the 28th degree, which is again not, not fortuitous, but it has a lot about it which twists, twists the mind. We see in this Mercury a person, a maintenance person, an employee of some kind, and um, uh, it is in, in its last stages. Mercury minus 14 points twists the usual thinking process into a, into a, a kind of um, a, a reverie of its own making. I see Mercury here as not occluded, but veiled mysterious somehow, a duplicitous nature, somebody with a Piscean name who, who may have a grudge against Piscean values, and that the mind is twisted by something to do with Christianity, which of course is the sign of Pisces itself, as Pisces is known as the sign of the fish. But when Mercury is in it, it's as if the thoughts become clouded, um, they become immersed in a, in, in, in a greater purpose. The individual mind is lost in a sea. And I think that this Chiron here, even though we don't normally see this in um, uh, honorary uh, astrology, I think this, the prize, I can see that the prize that was burnt or possibly is burnt, we don't know yet. We see what is in the ruins. But this Mercury here, this Chiron, uh, just descending in the sign of fire itself. But I see this Chiron as sitting in Aries, and Aries rules the head, and Chiron is the wounded soul. This person has an axe to grind. They're in pain. They're in a kind of revenge mode for scorn upon uh, those people of which it, it, uh, they, they, they have, this person or these, these people unknown have a, a deep wound within them and I can see this almost as the crown of thorns itself. The woundedness on the head and this mercury works towards this, it is conjunction towards this and it was known that uh, amidst the treasure trove was symbolically or actually the supposed crown of thorns that Christ wore. We can easily see this in the symbolism. But the person that perpetrated this is duplicitous. He signs or she signs his name, and it's not his real name. It seems to be a woundedness either in the thigh, a mark on the head, a, a kind of signature which is not true to the actual person. There is a mystery behind it, a passport which is dual, a, a person who says one thing but veils himself or herself in a, in a, in a mystery, a, 
a chameleon in a way. Probably somebody with a smooth skin conjunction this Venus. In Pisces, what they say on the surface is not what is underneath. One fish swims in the upper direction and one fish swims into the ocean. This is a person confused. This is a person crowned in a kind of emotional woundedness that seeks to take out its revenge on something. Chiron often turns into a form of savagery. In fire signs here, we see what this form of savagery has done. Somehow the mind has talked itself into a savage and destructive event. The other thing is that it has a lot of affinity with this Mars that we call this the disposing planet because Mars is in Gemini and what the ruler of Gemini is uh, Mercury. So we see this as a, say, as a kind of fiery air, a, a, a conflicted mind um, which has sought to burn down one of the most iconic buildings in the world. There are three mutual receptions here to Saturn. As I started out in this, in the beginning of this discussion, that this Saturn, Pluto, seems to demand something that has been destroyed. We will see as the moon moves on its course along this, probably in about 21, 22, 23 days, when eventually the moon will, um, by anyway, um, uh, by if, if you take one degree a day, will come into an opposition of this Mercury. And it is here that the revelation of this person or things unknown as yet, this kind of strange workman uh, who has uh, put on a cloak, uh, a chameleon-like cloak, which appears as one thing but is actually something else. And so, uh, to a certain extent, this moon, if this chart is valid, will reveal over the course of time something to come out. There's something to be said about this burning down of the church. Okay. So that's my uh, sense of it here. And um, I just want to um, mention something before I go. Words of the great late Orson Welles. Um, and in his film, F for Fake, which was a kind of uh, film documentary essay, a terrific film, a great performance artist, uh, one of my favorite people uh, in, in the past, an inspiration to me in terms of art and a person that was dedicated to the cause in him, which needed to produce a certain kind of artistic expression. He, in the film F for Fake, he spends about two and a half minutes on a section uh, that he filmed, um, which includes um, uh, a charter. charter. And he reveres the building, it's an iconic building and so on, but it's interesting that that many years ago, he said, even though in it, it was the building he described as an epic chant, an epic chant to, to the dignity of God and man, even though he felt that uh, the dignity of man seemed to have arisen above that. But he said this, Everything must finally end in war or wear away in the ultimate and universal ash. And indeed, that prophetic statement has indeed come through. I don't doubt that there will be a resurrection. I don't doubt that this building will be transformed in some way. But something in the past couple of days has died and it is well to uh, reflect or mourn the loss of this great world-renowned edifice. Good night.